Whether you're Team AIO or Team Air Cooling, one thing remains the same. is that we all swear dun sa performance ng ating thermal paste. But what's this? Sabi dito, it's the conducto nut and it's made of liquid metal compound. So, what's the fuzz? And is it a worthwhile upgrade para sa system mo? Or gimmick lang siya? I'm Rocky the Programmer and this is Jay the Tech Guy. And in this video, we're going to find out how does the conducto nut stack against dun sa conventional na thermal pastes. Here we go. Ang video na to ay handog ni cdkoffers.com. Marami kang mahahanap na iba't ibang uri ng software dito. May games, apps, activation codes for Windows 10. Check out our video on CDK Offers in the video description. Mabilis, mura, and syempre legit dito. Madali lang mag-order, search for the software you need, add to cart, check out, daan ka sa payment options nila, wala pa isang minuto, finished. May legit working CDK ka na sa software na pinili mo. Gamitin ang aming promo code para makakuha pa ng extra 20% discount sa purchase mo. Kung naghanap ka ng mura, legit, and original software, check out cdkoffers.com. So primer lang sa PC cooling in general. Yung mga components, they generate heat as they're used. Yun yung tendency talaga ng mga electronic components, especially yung CPU. Ngayon, yung solution dun would be, syempre, to get a cooler. Pero yung basic idea niya would be to increase yung surface area ng component. So that's why yung mga coolers nagme-make sila in contact with the integrated heat spreader ng CPU or yung silver part ng CPU on top of it. So, hindi yun yung chip mismo. It's just a metal thing so that it, heat can travel through it. So, ngayon, kapag nakadikit na yung CPU cooler or yung kahit anong cooler or heat sink na nandun, ang mangyayari, uh, depende siya eh. For air coolers, merong heat pipes yun. Na yung heat pipes, meron siyang liquid actually sa loob. So, once the liquid inside of the heat pipes gets heated, nakakaroon sila ng phase inversion. That means magta-travel na yung liquid na yon upwards or papunta dun sa heat sink or yung heat sink fins. Parang pinaka-basic idea nga nun would be yung dahil madami yung fins na yon if you actually spread that out, napakalaking surface area nun. And in-occupy yun ng heat. So yung fans, i-dissipate yung heat as warm air and hopefully outside of your system sa AIO naman, halos ganun din pero instead of yung heat pipes meron siyang pump na may nagsa-circulate na liquid yung liquid na yun, pumupunta din siya sa fins ng radiator naman, hindi lang siya basta heat sink, and similar with the heat sink, meron ding mga nakakabit na fans dun, and yun yung nagdi-dissipate naman ng heat away from them so yung pinaka-idea nun is remove the heat from the component so that it can keep on working so saan papasok naman ngayon yung thermal paste so sabi natin kanina, yung cooler mo or yung more specifically yung cold plate ng cooler mo, it makes contact with the CPU or more specifically yung IHS or yung integrated heat spreader. Makikita naman natin yun, di ba? Naka, parang nakasalpak siyang ganun. And you can say na, yeah, it's making contact and nakadikit na dikit siya dun. Pero on a microscopic level, hindi naman siya completely smooth eh. So you can have many gaps doon sa contacts na yon and yung gaps na yon nakaka-trap yun ng warm air or ng hot air so hindi siya conducive doon sa pag-remove ng heat so doon papasok nga yung thermal paste kasi when you apply yung thermal paste doon sa cold plate and doon sa integrated heat spreader ma-fill niya yung gaps na yon so yung number 1 na spec sa compounds or sa thermal compounds would be yung kanyang thermal conductivity that means yung kung gaano siya ka galing or gaano siya ka effective na mag-transfer ng heat or mag-absorb ng heat. So, examples no would be metals are really conductive to heat. Meanwhile, yung um, siguro yung mga kahoy or yung karton, hindi siya ganun ka-conductive, di ba? Meaning, hindi siya ganun kadali uminit. So, yung thermal conductivity na yun is measured in watts per meter Kelvin. So, yun yung parang pinaka-measurement niya. So, ngayon, ano yung liquid metal? Liquid metal is a very different kind of material sa paggamit sa thermal compounds. Yung typical na, co na thermal compound is made of silicon. Minsan, meron siyang metals din and... Marami pang ibang chemicals and nasa paste form siya. Makikita mo yung lagi na parang gray na gooey substance. Whereas itong conductonot, makikita natin mamaya na it's 
literally liquid na metal. You can also say na it's actually molten metal. Kasi, it's actually made of gallium. Ang special dito, and it's going to be nerdy, and so you can skip this part ahead, is yung gallium, um, yung kanyang melting point is, very interestingly, negative 19 degrees Celsius. So, napakalamig nung kanyang melting point. So, mamaya, makikita nyo na even at room temp, or actually, hindi naman to room temp, medyo malamig pa rin to, hindi siya, hindi siya solid na metal tulad nito. As in, yun nga, tulad nga nung name niya, liquid metal siya. And also, yung kanyang boiling point naman is actually sobrang taas, 1,300 degrees Celsius. So, that's actually good for yung mga applications na gagawin natin dito. Kasi, hindi ka mag-worry na baka over time mag-evaporate siya or mawala siya. Unless, syempre, may ginagawa kang sobrang f up sa PC mo <laughs> na umaabot ka ng 1,300 degrees Celsius. Para matest yung effectivity ng conductonaut against yung mga typical na thermal compounds, we're going to test it sa dalawang systems. Yung first system is... Ang uh, ating hardware sugar test bench na mayroong Ryzen 3 3100Z running 3.5 GHz base clock and 3.9 GHz boost clock installed on a D550M motherboard na mayroong uh, usual 16 GB RAM running 3200 MHz na mayroong RX 570 and 750 watts power supply. And yung second system natin is a very special one. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> Napakaganda niya, di ba? This is where it all started. Well, it all started nung pumunta si Sir Anton and si Sir Rocky sa Japan and they saw how awesome and amazing yung PC building and yung PC shopping doon and they wanted to bring the experience here sa Philippines. And syempre, you know them naman na parang sawang-sawa na rin talaga sila sa customer service dito sa Philippines. Especially for PC parts. Pero, well, it all started online here. Dito namin nagawa, dito namin na design, and dito namin na code. And later, dito namin na upload yung Hardware Sugar website and yung mga designs. And also, yung, iba nung, yung, yung mga beginning na YouTube videos din. So, it's nothing special. It's just a, it's just, it's just an Intel 7500 na CPU. Pero it's very special to us kasi this is where talaga it all started. Alam nyo ba na dati, parang mga second-hand na monitors lang, exclusively yung binibenta namin. Ngayon, ngayon, ang dami na. Wala pa kaming add to cart noon dati. Kapag ka nag-buy na ako ka dun, <laughs> may lalabas dun na prompt, tapos mami-message kami na, hey, may gustong bumili. Tapos babato namin kayo sa Facebook. Ayun, we're going to test yung conductor note dito. And to test, we're going to benchmark with Cinebench R20 or R19 ba yan? R23. R23. And yung time spine na libre lang sa Steam. So we're going to record yung mga max temps and yung average temps na makukuha namin sa normal na pace lang and later yung conductor note. And the results are in. We've used AS500 Plus from Deepcool for this test on ANTH1 thermal paste. And the maximum temps we've got are 47 degrees Celsius. Minimum are 30.5. Nga pala, we run this test on Cinebench R23. Ayan. So, next yung time spy naman. And we're, it's currently ongoing. Pili namin itong time spy because this is a very, you know, accessible na benchmarking tool. It's free. Tapos, yung results niya, meron ka pang kunwaring score. Tapos, you can actually compete worldwide do sa mga similar na setups and yung results page niya it's very comprehensive makikita mo dun yung clock speed mo makikita mo rin yung max na temps na ongoing or yung mga temps na na reach mo while the test is going on so gamitin natin yung time spy okay so tapos na yung time spy um we've got 46 degrees max temps and still 35 degrees minimum Compared dun sa ano kanina yun? 47 max. Ito, 46. 46. So, medyo consistent siya. And medyo mababa kasi 3100 lang talaga siya. Mamaya at makikita pa natin kung ano performance sa iba pang CPU. Ngayon, itatest na natin tong conducto note. Ngayon, yung special sa conducto note is yun nga, liquid metal siya. And bakit siya liquid metal? And ano yung special dun? Yung typical na thermal conductivity yung sinasabi natin na kanina sa mga thermal paste min nagme-measure lang sila sa 5 to 12 watts per meter kelvin so 5 to 12 sabi ng thermal grizzly yung conductor nut daw ang na-reach niyang thermal conductivity is 73 73 watts per kelvin per meter kelvin so ang laki ng difference na yun no tapos 
mas madali daw siyang like mag-spread kasi iba yung consistency niya. Pero we'll see kung yung mga number gains ba na yon ay magta-translate sa real life na performance improvement. Okay, so unbox natin siya <laughs> or unwrap. So para siyang candy, no? So, sa natin. <laughs> J-Health, ah, ayun, okay na. Okay, so we get alcohol pad. So, ito yung panlinis mo nung existing mo or mamaya baka may nagkamali ka ng paglagay. Very handy. Tapos, meron ding instructions. Oh, meron din siyang certificate of origin. And then, ito. Ito yung mismong liquid metal. Tapos, oh, okay, nice. Meron din siyang mga applicators. So, para lang siyang Q-tips. <laughs> Actually, Q-tips ang talaga siya na itim. Tapos, yung nozzle niya, yung parang typical yata, or ito ba yung pambukas? Hindi, ito yung parang nozzle na typical, yung parang sa normal lang. Or, ito. Para siyang syringe na nabali. <laughs> Siguro kasi, kapag ka nilagay mong ganun, siya na rin yung pang spread mo. Kasi malalaman nyo kung bakit maganda to. Kasi, mamaya, malalaman natin. Kasi yung consistency niya, medyo weird. Or hindi typical. So, uh, di-disassemble lang ni Jay yung cooler, tapos apply na natin. And we're going to take this opportunity to warn you guys na, warning! Kasi dun sa, <laughs> dun sa last video natin, medyo may mga controversial na whatever. Pero ito, I'm warning you guys, make sure na if you're going to use this, make sure na hindi aluminum yung inyong cooler or yung cooler pad or yung cold plate. Pwede magkaroon siya ng ibang parts na aluminum. Basta yung mag may, may contact dun sa mismong liquid metal should not be aluminum. So, that would include yung mga stock coolers. So, hindi pwede ito sa mga stock coolers. Di ba, Jay? Yes. Kasi yung mga Intel stock coolers in AMD rate, yung Spire, alam ko, aluminum yun eh. So, don't try this dun sa mga systems na yun. And special dito na isa pa na parang pwede mo rin masabing con is that it's electrically conductive. Meaning, you should treat this like water. So, gusto nyo ba na magkaroon ng tubig dun sa ibang parts ng PC nyo? Siyempre, hindi, di ba? So, when you're applying this, make sure na hindi siya pupunta anywhere else sa system nyo. Kasi, pwede talaga siyang makapag-short ng motherboard. Very dangerous to and very risky to. So, we're not... Actually, we're not... Um, hindi namin to nire-recommend for newbies. Lalo na yung mga wala pong masyadong experience sa pag-apply ng mga thermal paste. So, nire-recommend lang namin to talaga sa mga performance hunters, yung mga power users talaga. Okay, so you've been warned. Okay. So, nililinis lang namin yung na-apply namin na thermal paste kanina. And then, we're going to apply na yung liquid metal. So, paano to apply, Jay? So, i-apply natin sa very little as much as possible. Um, initially, dapat linisin talaga natin siya with the alcohol wipes na provided nung pa. So, yun yung una natin gagawin. After that, apply natin yung liquid metal. Then, uh, dapat naka-pre-spread siya bago natin ikabit yung uh, cooler. Also, uh, lalagyan rin natin yung cooler ng liquid metal. Uh, sa cold plate ng cooler, lalagyan din natin siya ng liquid metal. Mm. So, ipi pre spread meaning ikaw yung mag-spread mismo ng liquid metal. Hindi tulad dun sa thermal paste na lalagyan mo lang tapos yun, parang yung pressure yung mag-spread. Dito kasi, very, ano siya, malabnaw. Yung consistency niya, ano, runny, medyo runny. So, yun, yung gagawin natin. Uh, gagawin ni Jay. <laughs> okay, so, lilinisin muna natin. So, yun. Ilinisin natin yung dye ng alcohol wipes. IHS? So, oh, yeah. <laughs> IHS. Integrated heat spreader. Oh. Ilinisin natin sa ng alcohol wipes then Ayan lang natin siya mag-dry. That way, lang. we'll be sure na walang maiiwang uh, thermal paste from the previous application. Same with the CPU cooler. So, yun. Hindi ka titigil lang at hindi mo nakikita yung reflection mo. Ayan, tayo lang natin mag-dry yung alcohol. Next, i-apply na natin yung liquid metal. Yan, as I said earlier, konti lang as much as possible. Then, ipipre-spread na lang natin. A little goes a long way. Mm. Okay, and we have to like talagang warn you guys 
na if you're not comfortable doing this, don't. Kasi mayroon talaga ng risk na masisira niyo yung components niyo. And you should only try this if you know what you're doing. So we're trying it for you na para makita niyo kung worthwhile ba siyang pag-aralan or whatever. Para siyang Mercury. There. And then first application natin. Next, may provided na Q-tips sa conductor na yun yung gagamitin natin pang spread. And as you can see, mahirap siyang i-spread kahit dahil sa Iba kasi talaga yung consistency, consistency niya. Consistency, yes. Hindi siya madaling mag-adhere. You have to really massage it dun sa IHS. Pero over time, tingnan nyo, para siyang, parang mag-smear siya dun. That's the like, consistency na you want. And so, yun yung gusto mong consistency actually. Yung parang makintag na makintag and smeared all over. Tapos, kailangan ma-occupy talaga yung buong IHS. So, pag nandun ka na sa like, pinakagilid, and you're working towards yung mga edges, you have to be very careful na hindi mapunta anywhere else yung liquid metal. And warning nga lang ulit, if you're not comfortable doing this, <laughs> don't. You, you really don't have to. Kaya namin ito ginagawa so that, syempre, para magkaroon ka din kayo ng idea sa so pwede nyo maging upgrade path and magkaroon kayo ng idea kung worthwhile nga ba yun. But, may mga times talaga na hindi worth it yung risk. Okay, so siguro mga solid na ano yun, Jay, no? 15 minutes? 15 minutes. Or more, no? So, very lab- laborious yung pag-apply <laughs> na ito, but... Ayan. So, yun yung basically medyo gusto mo, pero hindi pa yan perfect. I-spread pa lalo ni Jay yan. Pero, yeah. Ikaw yung mag-spread manually ng um, liquid metal. Tapos, to be sure, since medyo runny nga yung kanyang consistency, talagyan din natin yung cold plate ng cooler. Nice. <laughs> Ito muna ka namin yun. <laughs> Yan, hindi pa siya masyadong perfect, pero hangin namin, lalagyan pa namin yan. Tapos yung next, yung cooler. So, eto, tulad itong cooler ito, you also have to be extra careful here. Kasi, yung cold plate nito, although nickel plated and copper, yung fins niya, aluminum. So, make sure din na hindi mapupunta dun yung liquid metal. Tapos, huwag mo yung lagay sa edge, Jay. Kasi, mm. kung, kung saan lang yung sa tingin mo mapupunta yung ano, yung CPU mismo. Yes. It's madali dyan, Jay, no? Mm. Okay. Siguro hindi pa tuyo yung alcohol kanina. Hindi. Uh, na ano ko lang. Inispread ko lang sa kahit... Di ba kanina kahit ano? Parang pinipilit ko na yung Q-tip yung gamitin pang oh. spread. Ito hindi. Parang kinalat ko lang yung gamit yung Q-tip. Hmm. Kunsan yung area lang ng CPU. Oh. Tapos... Ginanan ka na ako na. Nakuha mo na. Yeah, master the art. So yan. This is how it should look like after i-spread yung liquid metal. So, ayan. Dapat shiny yung uh, surface ng cold plate. Yeah. So, as much as possible din kung aware na kayo sa area ng uh, IHS sa cold plate nyo, yun lang yung lagyan nyo ng uh, liquid metal. Uh, that way, we can avoid liquid metal running around sa surface ng sakit natin. And again, we won't get tired of telling this, pero do it when you're comfortable, parang guide lang to. This is a, uh, ito lang yung, ano ba? Well, pinapakita lang namin. Hindi namin nire-recommend na, <laughs> na gawin nyo. Pero, syempre, eh, since we're all in the hobby naman, and itong hobby na to, madami talaga, madami ka talagang ma-discover na things. It's one thing na you can try to learn. Pero, we will find out if worth it ba siyang i-learn. Run mo na yung HW info. Mm. 
Oh. Oh. Ano yung kanina? 35. And ngayon, And now running na siya on 30 ha, 30.1. So that's 4 degrees lower. 5 degrees lower. Oh, grabe. Pero ito yung idle. Titingnan natin kung nag-hold true pa ba siya kapag uh, win ng 100% natin tong CPU na to. So let's hit. So hit first, it with the this to run tayo ng Cinebench. Okay, so nagwa 100% siya at 43. 43.3.44.44. Mahal pa rin siya. One eternity later. So yon sadly, 46.6 yung highest niya. So around 0.4. Oh, 0.4. degrees Celsius. Degrees Celsius na baba. So mayroong baba pero it's kinda na smart. <laughs> And we can't say na hindi rin yun parang fault nung ano, no? Fault nung... Kasi that's a very good cooler, cooler na by itself, yes. eh. Uh, Saka maganda yung case, nice. maganda naman yung ano natin. Well, so yun, we're gonna test it sa so another CPU pa. And, pero, yun nga, yung parang expectations din namin medyo bumaba na rin. Mm. And we're, we're sure na it's gonna be the same. Pero, para lang maging thorough, we're gonna test it sa 7500 ng Intel. Okay, so unfortunately, hindi gumana yung Hardware Sugar Office PC and so dinala ko na lang yung aking PC which has a 3600 XT na CPU. So, okay yun kasi mas nasa geared siya for gaming and medyo high to mid-range na yung kanyang um, class. So, we're gonna do the same test, yung isa sa conventional na thermal paste and then later, i-apply natin yung liquid metal dun sa cooler na to which is ID cooling. Okay, so dun sa conventional na thermal paste with the time spine na uh, benchmark, yung highest niya is 69 degrees. Yan. So, yun, na-sustain naman niya ng okay. And 69 degrees na highest na temperature sa CPU is not that bad. Okay, so with time spy done, yung Cinebench naman na R23. Ngayon, so far, yung kanyang temperatures... Halos the same din, 67 yung highest, yung kanina 69. So, we'll see how this goes. This would go for 10 minutes pa. Okay, so same as before, yung maximum niya is 69 degrees after mga ilang passes nung Cinebench R23 na multi-core CPU test. So, ngayon, i-apply na natin yung liquid metal and then titignan natin kung ano yung difference niya sa temperatures. Let's go. So, kanalas na natin yung uh, AIO ni Rocky. Kakabitan na natin siya ng liquid metal ngayon. As we've said, little it goes a long way. So, so start muna natin siya sa Cinebench. So, agad yung kanyang max ay 65 kanina 69 pero like this is still ramping up so we'll, we'll still see so after 10 minutes of testing sa Cinebench it's 68 degrees Celsius kanina 69 degrees so I have to say na that's a 1 degree difference from yung NTH kanina na conventional and for, in my opinion it's not worth it kung ganito yung application mo, is it worth it yeah, for you? Yeah, definitely not worth it. So yun, uh, NTH1 for how much? Uh, 335 pesos na 69 degrees versus uh, 68 degrees dun sa conductonot na 625 pesos. So doble. Yeah, price to performance difference, um, hindi talaga siya worth it. Also, yung effort mo in uh, applying those uh, solutions sa uh, normal, sa traditional thermal paste, you'll just put E-size amount ng thermal paste then you're good to go. Yeah, you matagal na Matagal na yung 20 seconds yes. dun sa pag-apply dun sa ter, sa traditional. Meanwhile, dun sa liquid Meanwhile, metal. Meanwhile, sa ating uh, on doctor note yung liquid metal, uh what it take me almost an 30 minutes to an hour to spread the liquid metal. Um hindi ako sure kung ganun talaga yun katagal pero that's how much time it took me to spread yung liquid metal sa IHS at saka sa a cold plate ng cooler. So, versus NTH1 or 
uh, kahit na anong traditional na thermal paste, hindi worth it yung effort. Yeah, tapos yun pa yung risk. Kasi yun nga, sabi nga namin earlier, ano siya, uh, electronically, low, electrically conductive siya. So, you have to treat it like water. Kung mapunta siya sa anywhere else sa, sa CPU mo, or sa computer mo, kailangan linisin mo yun completely. Kasi nga, yun nga, delikado siya and may, may risk na mag-short. So, we don't recommend this for noobs. And actually, for kahit yung mga... Ang application mo is ganito. Like, meron kang CPU, tapos meron kang cooler. Hindi <laughs> namin siya nire-recommend. So, what's the big deal? Bakit kailangan... Bakit merong liquid metal? Well, yung target niyang application is yung mga like nasa echelon or like nandun sa pinaka-apex ng mga system builders. What they would do is either sa GPU or sa CPU, yung tinatawag na deleting. So, tatanggalin nila yung IHS and then i-apply nila directly dun sa die yung liquid metal para um, para may direct na contact yung cooler dun sa die. Yun yung nagiging bottleneck natin eh, kung bakit pareho lang sila halos, parang 1 degree lang. It's not that hindi maganda yung performance nung, um, nung liquid metal, but yung gap between yung die and yung IHS, medyo malaki pa rin yun para ma-bridge nung liquid metal. Kung, <laughs> kung bibigyan kami ni Sir ng vice or yung pangtanggal nung yeah. <laughs> IHS, we can prove and we can test it na napakalaki talaga nung difference, like, difference nun. Pero wala eh. <laughs> so, yun, if you're not a super power user and like enthusiast ka, we recommend na mag-stick sila sa normal na thermal paste. Yes. Normal na thermal paste. Uh, yun nga, uh, price and yung effort na kilalaan mo on applying it, hindi worth it talaga yung uh, liquid metal. Yeah. Sad. <laughs> I was expecting na ano eh, na medyo may malaki dito sa um, sa gaming na CPU. Yes. Kasi yung kanina, ay yung last time, 3100 lang yun. I was expecting na parang, siguro kaya mababa yung kasi mababa talaga yung TDP nun. Yes. Ito, overclock to, and ayun nga. Yung pala, hindi na namin ginawa yung time spy kasi wala na rin silbe eh, Kasi nakuha na namin na <laughs> 1 degree lang yung ano eh, difference eh. So, nag, eto na yung conclusion. So, anyway, if if you like the video, please like it. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. And consider na you visit yung aming physical store dito sa Makati, Hardware Sugar at Giho Street. And i-check out nyo yung aming forum, yung pwede magtanong at pm.hwsugar.ph. So, see you next video. And thank you to our top fans na afford na namin itong upuan na to. Hindi, joke lang. Thank you to Leah Magnaye, Ian Meru, Richard Onkinko, ITX Addict, John Ruben Ocha, Christian Espinosa, and Rafael James. Thank you for supporting the channel.